Look! Up in the sky! It's a decimal! It's a fraction! It's... Math Man! Hi, I'm Bob Kresch from Scholastic Instructor Magazine, and today we're going to take a look at a lesson I call Fraction Museums. When teaching students about abstract mathematical ideas like fractions, it's good to start with concrete experiences. And manipulatives are the perfect tool for giving kids that hands-on understanding. The third grade students in this video have already had a variety of experiences with fractions. Today's lesson is designed to help them show what they know by creating their own fraction museums. Have you ever been to a museum? Raise your hand if you've been to a museum. Okay, a lot of you have been to museums. Very good. At museums, you may notice they'll have an exhibit about something, and then they'll have signs or um, different kind of plaques that actually tell you about it. Have you ever seen anything like that, Maria? We saw this this piece of like a, of a of a mummy like part of the face for the for the tomb thing, and it has a great in the back, and I forgot what it said. But it's something about the, the mummy. All right, so there was information you could read about the mummy. Today, you're going to be making your own museum. What do you think your museum is going to be about, Antonio? Fraction. Yes, you're going to make your own fraction museum. Now, I'm going to make two right now just to show you the idea, a little bit of a model. And I'm going to build a fraction exhibit like this. And then I want to have a sign explaining it. So I have these little cards that have been cut. And you'll be doing the same thing, creating your own sign. And I'm going to write about a certain fraction. For my exhibit here, what am I trying to show my museum goers? Polly? One fourth. I'm going to build another one. So I have these. All right. And I'm going to write about this. Tell me about my exhibit a little bit. Anush? Two thirds. Two thirds. So I've just built two exhibits of fractions for my museum. But then there's one special thing you got to do at your museum. You have to build what we call the mystery exhibit. The mystery exhibit is when you, you build an exhibit, only this time you do not write the fraction. You write a question mark. Because later on today during this lesson, some people are going to visit your museum. And they're going to have to figure out what your mystery exhibit is. Do you think you know what to do now? I don't want to share too many examples, but at the same time, students need a clear idea of what's expected. The big question is this, can they transfer what they know about fractions and apply that knowledge to a variety of materials? I like to keep things open-ended by not asking for a predetermined group of fractions. That way, students are free to try many options and demonstrate the full extent of their knowledge. So there's seven different pieces here? Yeah. And the three are blue? The three are red? Three are blue, right? That's cool. Are there any more of the Is this the two six? Which are the two? The blue. So one whole and two fourths. So you're going to write that. Okay, that's good. I'm good with that. While walking from desk to desk, it's easy to individualize the lesson. I ask the more advanced students to stretch themselves and create more complex fractions. And for students who need more practice, I ask them to create more basic fractions, like one half, one quarter, three fourths. That way, I can tell if they understand the concepts. This is a great time for assessment and differentiation. Oh, interesting. So there's one, two, three, four, five pieces. Oh, six pieces. So two out of how many? Two out of six. This two fourths is this one, right? What would be an equivalent fraction for this one? One half, yeah. So if you want to do the equivalent, you could also write the equivalent, but that's really well done so far. So it would be three out of nine. And how would you say that? Three what? Three, nine. Perfect. Louise, you're really getting practice. I'd like you to bring a pencil and a clipboard back to that area where we started. So now we're going to have a chance to visit. 
and this is what we're going to do. Um, you're going to have a, a partner assigned to you. So for example, let's say that Maria and I were partners. Okay? So Maria, I would have my exhibit, and you would have yours. And each one of us is going to get a paper like this. Okay. You'd write your name at the top, and then you would write what museum you visited. So I would put my name, Mr. Kretsch, museum visited, I would write Maria's museum. And then it says, fraction exhibits I saw. So I have to go look at Maria's exhibits, and if I see, hmm, she has one-fourth, I have to write one-fourth. If she showed three-eighths, I have to write three-eighths. Maria, your job at the museum is to explain to me why you called that one-fourth. She can't just say, oh, here's one-fourth. She has to say, oh, I called it one-fourth because one out of the four pieces was green. So you actually have to give your friend a little tour of the museum. And of course, at the bottom, what do you think's there at the bottom of the page to write about, Antonio? The mystery, the mystery fraction was. When you get to the mystery exhibit, what you want to do is you want to write what you think it is. Then talk to the person about it and say, is this right? And they might say no, or they might say yes. If they say no, then ask for more information. Have them explain it to you. Like, you might say, what colors am I supposed to be looking at? And then they can tell you, and they can say, oh, I think I know what it is now. So when I call you, what I'd like you to do is come up. I'll give you your papers. You can put them on your clipboards, and then you can go visit the museum. Antonio and Nihar. Having students visit each other's museums has several benefits. They get practice interpreting and recording fractions, as well as using the proper symbols. They also get to stretch their thinking by seeing other examples they might not have considered. You're trying to find the green. You're judging by each piece. Yeah, that's it. And then there's and that's what you call it half one, two. two three, that's so we're judging by the color over. Yeah. That's one's half. That's a very four. good explanation. Really good job. You're a good curator. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred, hundred, ten. Is it ten or ten? Seven. 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 Se